Joining me now in studio is Dr. Michael Ayabe, head of, head of disaster management at the Kenya Red Cross. Thank you so much for coming in, Dr. Terry. So uh, my colleague, Serfin, gave us a situational report on the coastal region, the impact there, very dramatic pictures coming from Mombasa, especially with the floods. But give us a countrywide picture. What are the numbers for today? Um, today we are talking about... Um, people who have been affected standing at around 58,132. Out of this, at least 24,928 mm -hmm. have totally been displaced. And um, unfortunately, this figure seem to be growing by the day because um, Though even those who had been affected initially, it's not that we found any solution, um, except that they either they are being hosted by uh, their relatives or friends, or they are in a camp. And then again, others are going to be displaced, and therefore we will just have these numbers swelling uh, by the day. What would you say are now the biggest or most pressing humanitarian needs? Um, about three things are, are coming to play. Um, one is the question of shelter. Mm -hmm. Most of the houses, as you've, you've seen, we have seen where water got into the houses. Of course, after the water will recede, somehow they will be able to salvage part of the housing. But there are those also that have totally lost everything in, the, in those houses or even the houses themselves. So. Um, these are the, the, the population that really need um, housing, and housing will come with, of course, issue, things like um, beddings that they will have to go with, uh, whatever they, they need to cook with. And this is what Kenya Red Cross is assisting uh, these families with these non-food items. Yeah. The other one is you can see what has happened. If in the place, uh, generally, you have um, a place that people are... Um, the water water issue everywhere where you had a toilet it's been um you know it's been covered by water and this has mixed with with the toilets and such like right yeah so if you find um that these toilets will mix the water system will will be contaminated so water it will be the next thing we also give we're giving chemicals the pool and uh, aqua tabs for people to be able to treat water and also setting up uh, mass water treatment plants to assist these people where they are grouped that they can be able to get clean water the third one is issues of, of health and this of course with time you will find uh, a lot of mosquitoes now will breed people will need to be the, the, there is risk for for um, diseases including cholera which would come if we don't treat water properly um, we need to be able also to provide uh, good drinking water anyway for, for, for use um, so quite an array of everything in the household becomes affected you mentioned displacement being a big problem, um, but probably biggest and most devastating are the deaths. We've seen 10 deaths in the last two days, Dr. Terry. A very worrying situation. But when you look at just the response, um, at least from the, the Red Cross, how are you dealing with early warning systems? People being told to move to higher ground, they wait until it's too late. So what are you doing about that, getting the messaging to them? Um, we are having a set of, of one is very, working very closely with um, the Kenya Met. Yeah. So they give us uh, the information um, and we have uh, climate scientists who work with us. So once we get that information with, that, with uh, of course, the translation of what it means, mm. then um, we are able to coin messages um, and be able to use our volunteers spread across the country to be able to send these messages um, to the public. We also have a, a, a working relationship with um, telephone service providers, the Safaricom. Yeah. So we send what we call Terra messages. So these are messages that are crafted specific for, for some areas. Because if, for example, when we already got the warning that Mombasa and Mandera, Wajia, Garissa belt will have heavy rains. So we send a message to people living along that line. So those who are having uh, Safaricom lines um, within that zone, get the message that tells you 
we are likely to have very heavy rains, so please move to higher ground. Be careful if it rains not to get into flood water. Avoid uh, driving in moving water or excess water, such like. So this is how we use this message. Okay. At the same time, um, Vicky, what we've done is even when earlier on there, there was this focus given was that some areas like uh, we would see we are coming from drought. So areas like uh, Machakos, Makwen, Makutkitui, Kwale, um, so that they were receiving um, this uh, better rain. So we also bought seed and worked with the farmers and distributed the seeds. So these seeds today, um, these farmers have yeah. um, been able to, to plant and they, they, they are going to have a, have, harvest at least something. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Aibe, for coming in. And uh, of course, this is a situation that we'll be looking at in the coming weeks as the rains persist. But again, of course, I will be looking at the progression on that. Now,